5 p.m. time of assembly and a time of uh, teaching and it's good that we can take the time to be here. Uh, reminder of Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, KARZ, uh, Channel 42, and I uh, hope that you can tune in and uh, <clears throat> catch that. Uh, we are going to finish there on the Sermon on the Mount for a few weeks, and then let's see, we're going to pick up after that, Brother Don is going to present a series on prophecy. Uh, on what is true. So be looking for that, be talking to your friends and sharing with them. And of course, uh, as you are able, uh, we, we have the vaccinated and the, and the masked and the socially distanced. Uh, we're, uh, we're doing well uh, and growing in number as we are able to get people uh, out and, and doing good. But our time of assembly, uh, Sunday morning, 1030, everybody that we can get here has been coming in. 5 p.m. we have a handful of us, and Wednesday uh, evening, same thing, uh, but we are trying to get, you know, and hopefully, like I said, as uh, the week progresses, hopefully we'll get this thing opened up and, and, and rolling, so we're excited about that, not excited about tonight's lesson, it's just an unfortunate reality that we have to deal with, and that is, in our day and time, the topic of pornography, and the reason that it is so important now is that we need to begin to address these things forthrightly as a community, as a people, as a church, as family, because it is, and you will see some staggering statistics in the lesson, and uh, they are probably not sufficient to address really what is happening. But, you know, the, the definition itself, the sexually explicit depiction of persons and words or images created with the primary proximate aim and reasonable hope of eliciting significant sexual arousal on the part of the consumer of such materials. And we have said this since 70s, sex sales. They used that terminology. That was a phrase that was used in the uh, boardrooms and in the rooms of those who would be setting out to promote products to you and I, to, for us to buy, and how they would use that is sex appeal, and that would be a marketing technique. The music industry, because of just given to the emotion of the moment, obviously, then you have society's influence through music, and then we have through movies, television, uh, we have all of these venues in which forms of this or introductory forms of this come to us, the average American adolescent, as far as the view of 14,000 sexual references per year on television, nearly one third of all family hour shows contain sexual references. So we are not talking about a thing that is not, in, that's not known. It's, we know that it is in our culture, in our society, and we are being overexposed. And what is happening, though, is what comes with this exposure is the desensitization. And, you know, the things that you saw in the 60s or 70s, depending on our 80s in your age range, and then just what you see now. And that's, you know, in a generation or two generations, it, it will... Read the permitted things. Well, just, let's dig Van Dyke. I just got one lay in there. Why, why did Rob and Laura have two separate beds? And why in any visual that, that the man was seen could never be in the circumstance inappropriate for television? You see, these things were in the rule book for society. Acceptable, unacceptable. You know what that is. Never before in the history of telecommunication media in the United States has so much indecent material been so easily accessible by so many minors in so many American homes with so few restrictions. U.S. Department of Justice. You, know, you don't have to go find you some little, you know, peculiar, quirky guy. This is, this is a statement of condition of a country. It was 
in days gone by. Well, those popped up, I don't know. It hadn't been that long ago. The adult store on the side of the highway, embarrassingly, but usually it was in the back alleys of, of, very, of other cities that were out of the way, and now they find highway footage and uh, portray exactly what they are marketing. Average age, your first encounter with pornography is 11 years old. That should just shake every one of us to our core, cause us to fall and to weep and pray. But consider that tragedy. The tragic fact is that over 4 million pornographic websites, and that's just, it's, it's, it's probably quadruple that. More than 70,000 or 70 percent of men, 18 to 34, visit a pornographic site in a typical month. This is a source media. <clears throat> Average age, the first personal contact, as we said, is 11 years old. It's a serious thing that we should, we must, as a people, discuss. You as families and you as parents must step forward. Mark Schwartz speaks of this uh, from a perspective, a clinical perspective, that it's like a heroin. It grabs them and takes over their lives. There's an addictive quality. It's, it's very difficult to treat because people uh, don't want to give it up. That is, any kind of addiction like that, there is a, an element released within the mind that causes it to desire and then it's on this course. And now the course, while as sin does, it, it presents itself to serve us and then we become enslaved to it. That's what sin does. This is no different. But the effect of it needs to be realized. In, in his book on the centerfold syndrome, Gary Brooks identifies five negative qualities this is what happens, this is what develops. Your voyeurism, your objectification, validation, trophyism, the fear of intimacy. The things that you would think would be natural in this tragedy of redirection of energy that should be devoted to a single individual to some uh, unnatural setting. In his book, speaking of that, he identifies it in this way. And it's simply voyeurism. Men become obsessed with looking at women rather than interacting with them as real people. And, and that this is not gender exclusive to either side. This attitude views women mostly as objects to be rated on the basis of their body parts as opposed to their mind or their personality, their spirituality, or any other quality. It's, it's a physical validation. Many men develop a need to have their masculinity affirmed by women. And they lose sight of that and they develop within their minds this tropism. They become property of a man's symbol of accomplishment or man of manliness. And his worth or their worth is based on increased prestige that they bring to the man. I mean that's the how that they qualify. This is what happens in a society that does cause the degradation of relationships to the point that this fear of intimacy is channeling energy and attention to false intimacy or pornography, men never develop the skill to necessarily have a deep, honest relationship with real women. And so these trap men in a world of loneliness and a fear of closeness. And so the Bible speaks to this. And out of the scriptures in 2 Peter chapter 2, and verse 19, 2 Peter 2, 19, it talks about the allurement of the flesh. And he says there, while they promise liberty, chapter 2, 19 of 2 Peter, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, and by whom a person is overcome, by him uh, he is brought into bondage. Now, here speaking of a spiritual leader that would speak great swelling words. And we've had this discussion previously in regard to a teaching that it permits, it's permissive. In other words, behavior does not condemn. 
And this is related to, in our country, this is what we are now facing, in whom we, as a culture, are opening the door. And there is, quote, this freedom, and it's promised as liberty, but the result of it is becoming slaves of bondage. Slaves to what? We saw what the book said, the fear of intimacy. What is being lost in our country, in our world today, is the relationships and the compassion, the reality of compassion and purity that belongs in relationships. And why is that occurring? Well, we will go through this process. We can see what occurs in, uh, we saw what occurred in Brother Patton's lesson on when you take the procreative process out of the union that it was designed for, and it leads to destruction, the end. Now we're looking at an issue in which that it prevents the relationship that perpetuates wholesome families that God would design. And what occurs, Proverbs 5 and verse 11, by the type of act, your flesh and your body are consumed. 1 Corinthians 6, listen to the text there. So 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he commits sexual immorality, sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is your, the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. In this pornography, he says, the flesh and body is consumed. In Proverbs 6, it asks the question to those that would say, oh, it doesn't affect me. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his fire is not in, the, in his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals and his feet not get scorched? And that's the plea in sexual immorality from Proverbs 5, 6, and 7. And we see that clearly. Jesus in Matthew 6, chapter, that the lamp of the lamp of the body is the eye, and that therefore the eye is good, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? That it, it can so consume one that they find themselves in the processes of self-justification. Matthew the fifth, and that's where we find in that self-justification is the addiction. It's where that it begins and it never ends. It never ceases. Matthew 5. You've heard it said that you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery and adultery. Looking to lust. What's occurring? Well, that's exactly what's occurring, is looking to lust. And the source of the problem, Matthew 15, Jesus still within the, the teaching or the, the recordings there of, of Matthew in uh, verse 18 and 19, those things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and these and they defile the man for out of the heart proceeds murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, False witness, blasphemies, these things are that which defile the man. It's from the heart. It's a heart problem. It's an issue. Shield your eyes. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. We have to understand the gravity of this condition that's been brought before us and how that it deconstructs the purity of our spirituality. And when we say out of it brings the wellspring of life, it's our view of life, our view of the realities of relationship have been diminished, destroyed. He who covers his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses, forsakes them, and will have mercy. We're looking for what can be done. And be honest with yourself. Flee sexual immorality. We saw there in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 18. Flee sexual immorality. And then be prepared for extreme repentance. 
And yes, to those that are watching, we know that basketball is going to give it away in a minute. Uh, no. Y'all, you know, you said iPhone thing. Heard the volume down. We need, and this is so important. You know, this is important in adult men, women's lives. I mean, we know the exposure, but the troubling thing is we need to figure out how we're going to get this issue addressed with these innocent children that are being blindsided. It's a tragedy. Be ready, though, here. If this is an issue in your life, be ready for extreme repentance. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it's more profitable for you that your members perish than your whole body be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's more profitable that one of your members perish than for your whole body be cast into hell. Well, somebody says, well, that's not talking about literal because, you know, you still have the other hand to sin with or the, uh, it's, or the other eye to sin with. Yes. What is he saying then? Be serious. Go to extreme measures to do what is necessary. Would it not be better to enter into life minus these physical numbers than to be cast into hell eternally? Let us walk properly as in the day. Not in lewdness, not in lust, Proverbs or Romans 13, or 4. put on the Lord Jesus and here is what we have to do. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So much of the premeditated aspect of these things are these could be eliminated. Pornography is spiritual warfare. It is a deceptive, vile passion. And it must be seen for what it is. Flee lust. O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Flee youthful lust. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So what must occur? 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, casting down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The good news, we will escape. As his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called you by glory and called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. Now what are these promises, friends? The struggle that we have in life. These great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Ephesians 5, verses 11 through 15, we see that we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of righteousness. It even tells us in this text, it is a shame to even speak. And that's why these things are so difficult. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it. It's shameful to even speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed that are made manifest by the light, and whatever is made manifest is light. Therefore, awake you, sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. See then that you walk circumspectly. Look carefully how you walk. What do we do? And I'm talking to, this is now the, the reality of repentance and avoidance. Avoid the point of contact. Flee. Run away. Literally. You know, there's uh, the Bible speaks a lot of, of fighting sin. Let's fight against sin. Overcome sin. Run. Run. To shun. To avoid. To stay away from. Escape. Flee. Psalm 51, as David is reflecting upon his great sin. 
independent freight. Is there a spiritual solution for a sexual problem? Identify the problem inside and within. Change habits. Listen, if there is a issue in life that has grown as sin, that has become a habitual sin, then you have to change habits. You have to create safeguards. There are things that you implement, and one of those is the honesty and the accountability. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Don't struggle. Let us pray together. There to be accountable. And be reminded, all of us, be reminded. As Job did make that covenant with my eyes. Let's, let's establish within our heart to, to make a covenant with our eyes that we do not sin. And the only framework that we see these things are only in that intimacy is reserved, it is pure, and it is undefiled. That's the, the, the tragedy of this lesson. What we are speaking of is a beautiful gift that God has given to men and women in their lives. Marriage is honorable. The bed is undefiled. The husband and the wife. And there is one flesh. And we're now speaking of what is being done to this unique, beautiful relationship and those who have taken it and cast it aside and made it something unclean and defiled. The news. There's no temptation that's overtaken you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful. who will not allow you to be tempted, but with the temptation will also provide the way of escape that you might be able to bear. May we bear the temptation to come our way. And may we help one another as we seek to lift one another up and to pray and to strengthen one another. If we can assist you, see the contact information that we have on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Uh, if there is anything that we can do in the way of helping you study through any of these materials, we would hope and pray that you'll contact us. Uh, let's close. Our loving Father, we're so thankful for the blessing of life, for the beauty of the day, and for the peace that comes from the relationship that we have through Jesus Christ with you. That we can approach your throne of grace, that we can have peace, that we can have forgiveness. And Father, as we discuss these topics that are so difficult and such a scar on the society in which we live, we pray that we might, as a people, return and strive for purity that will restore the sanctity and the sanctification of the marriage relationship and the love that should be demonstrated between individuals that is wholesome, that lifts up, that builds one another up. We ask you, Father, to strengthen, to forgive, to watch and direct. Be with those who are infirm and struggling in any way. In Jesus' name. Aliens. Aliens.